Hello, welcome to Painting for Beginners. During this short course, we'll be spending two sessions in looking at the basics of working, working with watercolours, followed by two sessions, again, looking at the basics of working with acrylic paints. As its name suggests, the key thing about watercolours is that you're working with water and colour. So you're using a medium which flows quite freely. Um, you can choose, as in these examples here, to keep that very much under control, or you can let that natural flowing really take over. So you see that much more in these examples here. And we're going to start by doing a few experiments, um, just looking at the very basic ways of using watercolours. And then we're going to, I'm going to demonstrate um, doing some flowers and doing a tree. But first, let's have a look at the different types of watercolour materials that you could be using. So we, here we have a range of, uh, of possible media that you could be using. So there's uh, traditional watercolours here and here. So if you get them as solid pans like this. This is quite a cheap set. You get much more expensive ones with richer colours. Or you can buy watercolour in a tube. You could use drawing ink, lovely fluid um, media, or these are very nice, Analinky Brilliant Watercolours, really strong dye-based colours. And each of these has slightly different properties, but essentially the way that you use them is the same. So there's no need to go out and buy every single thing. What I just say to you is whatever you've got, you can use for all of the techniques I'm going to show in the first two sessions. Um, but what I'm going to do is with each different subject I look at, I'm going to use a slightly different media just to make it more interesting. Now, if you're going to be using these, you do need to know a little bit about how to use them. So I'm just going to start with a little bit of very basic, which is this. Um, if you add a little bit of water to a pan set, you're going to get quite a weedy colour. But if you scrub at it, like this really sort of work and get lots and lots of liquid. So you've got a lovely flowing liquid on the top. You get something much, much richer. I'm just going to point out that I've got two pots of water, one for cleaning my brush and one that I'm trying to keep clean. With the... Um, watercolour tube set, people often don't add enough water to start with. So I'm going to add a fair amount of water in there straight away. And I'm trying to make a liquid. So completely dissolving that lump. So I've got a nice liquid that I can work with. Ink is fairly straightforward because you just dip it in. Um, the last one I just want to show the Analinkies, because these, because they're so strong, it's actually quite even difficult to see the colours because they're dyed. But if I just glance over one of these, you see a very rich colour with hardly any water. As I say, each one of these media has slightly different properties, but for the purpose of this course, we can use them all pretty much in the same way. In addition to... Um, these sort of more traditional paints, you can make your own. You could, for example, use coffee or for a, a lovely rich brown, which I'll be doing in one session. Um, also, elderberries are absolutely brilliant, although they're out of season at the moment. A really rich sort of purple, pinks and blues that you can get by slightly adjusting them. The only word of caution with making your own dyes is that they may um, fade with time. Some are more stable than others. There's a couple of things that you might want to have which I'm going to be using during this session. I'll just show you my brushes. I've got a flat brush and a round brush and a detail brush. I've also got a sharpened stick, a straw, actually with a bend in it, got a pencil, 2B and a rubber, 
I've also got um, a black colour pencil, in this case it's a watercolour one, I might use for a little bit of detail, and I've got a bottle with water in it, a spray bottle. Right, all set uh, for this set of exercises, I'm going to be looking at the flowers and I'm going to be using uh, this pan set. I'm going to demonstrate for you um, two of the basic techniques of working with watercolours, which are glazing and wetting wet. So I'm going to start with glazing. Um, I'm using as thick a paper as I've got. Um, so thick cartridge paper is great. Watercolour paper is even better uh, because it's like texture. If you want a cheap alternative, you can uh, you can do worse than buying uh, lining paper, which is used for painting and decorating. You, you can get it really quite thick, up to 1000 GSM, which is a measure of the thickness. Um, and it's really worth um, considering, you know, getting something like that. Um, because then you've got lots and lots of paper that you can experiment with. So, glazing is a technique where you apply a colour, let it dry, then apply another colour over the top. So I'm going to start off with a bit of this blue. So we're applying it straight onto the paper. With some of that just a bit more look a bit more and another area I think I'll do a different color some of this red notice straight away the way that the, the color is um, uneven that you tend to get a darker edge on one side if you use the brush sideways and a lighter um, edge towards this end of the bristle. That's part of the characteristics of watercolours and it's something that you want to keep. So one last band of colour, this yellow a little bit stronger than that. Okay, a little bit more, just a bit more, just so you can see it clearly. Now I just need to leave those to dry. So I've dried those off. I should have mentioned that um, I've taped my paper down onto a piece of board. And the reason for that is because as the paper gets wet, it can curl up and then you get puddling of colour, which can spoil your results. So clean water, I'm going to take uh, a different colour and put it over the top. What you should see is what, that because the colours are trans, um, very translucent, you get colour mixing as they go over, but you get quite distinct um, lines where the colours meet. And that will really show up as it dries. Try a, bit more, try a bit of yellow on there. So you're getting a sort of orange mix where it crosses over. Try some other colours. So see that colour mixing as it goes over the top. Something you do have to be patient with. Um, if you want to build up more colour, you might need to dry it off. A lovely purple and get in there as those two areas meet and mix. You can see though that they're not blending into each other. You get very distinct sort of lines between the two.
Sometimes it takes a few goes to just build that colour up a little bit stronger, get more interesting effects. Um, I'm dabbing my brush on the paper towel after washing it just to get any extra colour on so I don't pollute my colours. And the yellow is not very strong in this pan set. As I say, it's a very cheap one, so I'm going to lay it over again just to sort of strengthen it. So you can see it a bit clearer. Okay, I'm going to dry that off. So hopefully you can see how one colour lays over the top of each other. Um, you get a colour mix in the visual mixing. Um, so it's sort of greens uh, where the yellow goes over the blue, purple where your blue goes over the red, oranges where yellow and red are laid together. Um, but you get very distinct sort of lines uh, and shapes. Uh, and that can be used to great effect. Um, for example, in this picture here, where you see those very distinct sort of uh, shapes of one colour laid over the top of another. The second major technique with watercolours is what's called wet in wet. And there are variations of this. So the first variation... I'm going to lay a colour on. Like so. And then take another colour and put it directly in. What you should see is that the colours sort of just sort of blend into each other. And sort of be patient with it, just let them one run into the other one. And I'll need to leave that to just dry so you can see the full effect, but hopefully you can see that one color is just bleeding into the next. I can always add a bit more of that one in too to just kind of enhance the effect, but just they blend and bleed into each other. A similar technique and for this I'm going to use a flat brush is to create a blend from one colour through to the next. Um, so let's start with some red and I'm going to do something which I've seen people struggle with. I'm going to go from red to green and the reason that people struggle is that they try to directly blend one to the next but that doesn't work. What you need to do is have an intermediate colour, which is the, the yellow. So you try to use colours which are closer in the spectrum. So whilst it's still wet, I'm just going to blend one into the next. A little bit more of that yellow down here. That's it. Just then blend one into the other. Notice I keep moving in that direction. And then I'm going to take the green. Starting from here, a little bit, get it a little bit stronger. Just blending one into the other. So you can take put one colour on and blend another colour in whilst it's still wet. Another way of working with wet and wet is to wet the paper first and then add the colour. What will happen is the colour will flow through the wet. And you can encourage it by tilting it around. Just about just move a little bit around. But it will stay within the bounds of the water that you've put on. I'm going to just um, 
switch back to the round brush I'm just going to drop a little bit of extra colour in there and just and then it sort of run and blend in its own sort of way slight variation on that I'm going to paint some watery lines here can't see them at the moment but I'm going to put dots of colour in them and you'll see that the colour follows the lines that I've painted and they will just blend and join up I think in a few minutes finally I'm going to put colour on here Ooh. to have a little bit more water in that a bit wetter and then I'm going to just bring some water up actually I'll bring it to this edge which is a little bit of the harder edge just a little bit up to that edge And can you see the colour starts to just sort of bleed out from there? Oops. Take my time working up to that edge so it just sort of hats it. So the colour starts to bleed into those lines. Similarly, then I can come up to this edge and just blend that out if I want to. Bringing water just up to the edge to make it flow and move. Okay, leave those to dry. So here they are dry. It's worth just mentioning that be careful about drying with a hairdryer too soon because it will blow the colour about. Um, so you get some really quite nice uh, random effects and part of watercolour is embracing uh, what happens when a colour flows through water. Uh, not trying to overly control it but um, accepting those lovely happy accidents uh, and, and extra detail that perhaps you wouldn't have thought to put in yourself. However, if you do find you've got a line that is too harsh like th there, you can with watercolours come back with some water and just sort of rework it because watercolors are re-wettable it's worth just noting that of the medium that i mentioned earlier the one that isn't uh, is inks most inks are waterproof so just blend that out a little bit if i want to and here is an example in a flower of using wet and wet techniques there's lovely sort of flowingness to the colors certain random edges um, lovely very natural sort of look a few final things that you could could do with your watercolor i'm just going to apply a nice bit of watercolor there and then take a straw and I'm going to use it in the reverse so having a short end there so it's easy to get down low and where I've put a little point it just encourages it to move and let's get another colour in there whilst it's still nice and wet. Let's get some of that in there. More. Oops, a little flash of my arm there. Let's uh, try a little bit of darker, mix that a bit more. A bit of dark brown. 
to make sure I scrub it nice and well to get the colour that comes out. Move my water pot so I don't keep putting my arm in front of the camera. Um, second thing. I sit here again, just there. And I'm going to take a stick. I can sort of drag it out to just create more pointy detail. Could have used the end of a, a brush. But this is just a little bit sharp because it's been sharpened. Just any old stick will do. And the third thing is splattering. So mixing up a fair amount of water with your um, watercolours. And then I'm going to tap uh, the brush against my finger to make small splatters. You can do something quite similar with a palette knife. Dip it into colour that I've mixed up and then I can flick it to make it splash. So it's important to just mix up a little bit of colour first. Take your time to do that. I've got it mixed up and just sitting in a little well of a palette. And let's look at some examples uh, where that technique's been used. So here we can see uh, sort of wet in wet color mixing and then some lovely splattering. Here we can see a really nice example of using blowing to create this wonderful sort of random uh, thistle head shapes. And here, Dragging whilst wet to create the spikes on the head of these flowers. Okay, so those are some uh, simple basic techniques. Now I'm going to use some of those uh, to create um, three or four um, different styles of flowers. So this is going to be um, sort of based loosely around this flower head. Um, I might add black lines in at the end, but we'll see. Um, I'll just see how I am inspired. So the first step, I'm just going to sketch out lightly a sort of flower head. So I've got a sort of head in the middle, and then I've got petals sort of coming off. from the middle. You can just sort of make this up as you like. That's the whole point of it. And a bit of the stem coming down here. There's my rubber. Don't want that line there. Maybe you know, just needs another one out there, I think, just to sort of balance it all up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, one more. Yeah, that'll be fine. Now, I would make this as light as possible, so I'd be very tempted to just sort of rub these lines out a little bit so that they're, they're, there is a guideline that they're not going to show too much when you actually do your painting. It's a 2B pencil which means that you get you may get a darker mark but it's a lot easier to rub out so i can still see that 
uh, but it's a little lot paler for you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with clean water. Let's see. I think on this case, I'm going to start with uh, it's sort of a nice strong sort of red. Notice as I tip the brush, I sort of get a bit of variation. That's all good. I'm going to paint it straight on there. And leave it to dry because this one I'm going to be working with glazing. So I'm going to paint every other one. Otherwise they're going to run into each other. That's been carefully dried off. And now I'm going to come back in with a yellow glaze over the top. Not necessarily putting it everywhere, just sort of playing and fiddling it around a little bit. So I've dried those off. And now I'm going to do the petals in between. Use a slightly different technique this time. I'm going to wet the paper, carefully following the pattern of the petal, and then put the colour in. I think I'm going to use two brushes. That way I can wet with one and I can put the colour in with the other. I don't have to change over so much. Put that colour in and just let it run through the water in its own sort of way. Just encourage that a little bit. Just, need to just sort of try to run in its own little way. So I applied the, the colour, uh, the first layer of colour on those middle petals, uh, wet in wet, uh, and I've got some interesting results, quite varied. Um, and that's the lovely thing about wet in wet, is, is, you know, waiting to see what you get. And now I'm going to glaze over, now it's dry, glaze over. So hopefully you can see where I've glazed back over the pattern from the um, wet in wet um, is still there. So there's lovely sort of patterns coming through. I've also had a little bit of colour into the stem, a little bit into here. And now I'm just going to keep um, fiddling around with it and adding a few more details. So So I'm reasonably happy with how that's come out so far. You can really see the sort of glazing of one colour over another. And I've put a few extra lines in just to sort of emphasise that. Um, I'm tempted to put a black line around part of it, like the original I showed you. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that. One way is with, um, with a stick and mix up some paint. So you've got some in your palette. So I just used my pan set. I kept working it, um, and adding more water and putting the result into there so I can use it. And the stick can be really quite nice. With watercolour, if you think about adding black, leave it till the end. Um, inks are slightly different because they're waterproof. You can actually draw with black, let it dry, and then put colours over it and it won't run into it. Let's just start to put maybe the odd little bit of. 
detailing with a bit of black using the stick so just using the stick to sort of drag out its colour a little bit yeah, yeah just dragging that black out just a little bit and let it fade as it comes out I think that's adding something Be careful just not to overdo it too much. I may have overdone it in a couple of spots. So I'm going to take my very fine brush. And I think it's just done a bit too much. I'm just going to sort of blend it out a little bit until it disappears. Remember that watercolours are really wettable so you can work them a bit more in that sort of way. I could keep fiddling with this for ages um, but I'll stop it there uh, and move on to a different um, a different technique different flower I'm now going to attempt uh, this flower, which uses uh, wet in wet and a little bit of glazing too, and a little bit of dragging. Okay, so I'm going to start, I've got my water nice and clean. And I'm going to start by, and it's hard for you to see, I'm going to paint the shape of uh, the petals coming outwards. I work quite quickly. Make sure I've got plenty of water on there for this to work. So I'm going back over it. I can just about make out where I'm putting the water. And now, nice bit of colour readily mixed already so it's get it in there and just let it go let it go and let it flow So I've dried that off and I'm starting to get some really interesting sort of uh, effects uh, which I want to develop a bit further and enhance. But first I've put some orange uh, here for the centre and I'm just going to use a stick to just sort of start to tease that out a little bit. Well, oh, might be a little bit dry, add a little bit more on our edge. And use the stick to just sort of drag it out and create a bit more of a fluffy fringe. That top edge. And I think I might just towards the top just a little bit of random splattering to sort of suggest pollen flying off. You can't quite see that. There we go. And now I'm going to work back into this area and I'll probably have a little bit of shadow around there too and the stalk. So I'm fairly happy with that. Um, 
want to keep that looseness and flowingness, not make it too work, but maybe just a few finishing touches. So I'm re-wetting a little bit of an area in there. Paint does move a little bit. And then I'm going to come in with a small brush and just sort of drop a little bit of black in there and let it flow around a little bit. It's slightly darker sort of centre. Leave that to just flow around a little bit. And whilst it is flowing, I might just take some of that out a little bit. There. Now on to another one. For my final flower, I'm going to um, try something like this. So I'm going to be using um, blowing. Um, so I've turned my page the other way up. And first things first, I want to get a nice lightish orange mixed up in my palette. And I'm going to put plenty of that on here. Creating that general sort of cup of the flower and just give it a few sort of nudges in the right direction I think have I got enough water in this maybe just a little bit more water to make sure it's nice and wet nudge in the right direction and then with my straw blow So I'm very happy with the flower up there. Uh, I'm going to just work back a little bit um, to create a bit more contrast into the sort of stem. So what I'm doing now is glazing over the top. So a combination of wet and wet combined with glazing. There, just add a little bit with a fine brush in, glazing over the top to um, to build up the stem uh, a little bit more. Um, next I'm going to have a look at um, trees, doing trees, but I'm going to switch now from watercolours um, to inks, just to show that you can do very similar things uh, with inks. Here are a couple of examples of my tree paintings, um, and I'm going to do one based on this. As I said, I'm going to work with inks, but this works just as well uh, in terms of techniques with watercolours. Uh, the sort of inks I use, I, I, the drawing inks I buy from Hope Education, which are, are surprisingly cheap, a lot cheaper than Winsor and Newton, but they work very well. Uh, and I've got, uh, not easy to see the colours, but some yellow, brown, green, blue, black and white, which should do me uh, quite nicely for this exercise. Uh, you'll notice there's a few, few scribbly sort of marks in there as well. I might use a stick or I might use um, a pencil for those sort of marks. Right. So I'm using a flat brush and I'm going to start with the shape of trunk, trying to get it to be a little bit sort of angular. I think, well, why, is it, why am I doing it in yellow? And the reason I'm doing it in yellow is because ink is uh, translucent. When I build other colours over it, if I start with a dark colour, uh, then it will show through. So if I start with yellow, it should blend in quite nicely with the other colours. And I'm just trying to get a sort of quite regular sort of shape, I'm trying to plot out where the branches are going in my tree it may help to look at a real tree for inspiration 
going to be using similar techniques uh, to last time. So some glazing, some wetting wet techniques, and maybe just a couple of other things. So that's my basic structure outlined. Now, whilst it's still wet, I think my round brush is going to start to get a little bit of a brown in there. That's my chunk, but notice I've left the branches um, quite plain. And I'm going to quickly dry that off i've dried off the trunk and now i'm going to start to build up the foliage before i do anything on the branches and there are several different techniques that you could use for this one of them is to use the shape of the brush and just put dashes of color in like so just letting them build up switching between colors letting them run a bit I find that is just a little bit too um, regular. So I don't know if you remember, I mentioned the spray bottle. What I'm just going to do is just shield it and just spray it a little bit so it encourages it to sort of feather out a little bit. And I can always block it if I'm not so keen in the running, but I just think it breaks up the marks up quite nicely. Um, another technique which I think I actually prefer is to wet an area and then start to just drop colours in. Let them move around doing their own sort of thing. Sort of bloom, and maybe I'll do a bit of spray of water. Between those two techniques, I think you can build up some quite nice sort of a foliage effect. So, sort of combine them both, and there's my finished tree. The secret to this is to not worry too much about having a lot of water and a lot of colors running around but to just let them go and see what happens um, and then you can always edit it if things don't go quite right or you can glaze back over the top um, this for example I'll just put it in outside in the sun for 20 minutes to to dry off and it's still a couple of a bits are still wet there are plenty of examples of watercolor um, flowers and trees uh, that you can find on the internet but if you fancy tackling something else go for it and I'm going to show you a slideshow in a few minutes uh, where people have take, tackled other subjects using these techniques um, in fact here's one I've done which is um, a leaf using uh, wetting wet and glazing and also dragging around the ink with a stick uh, different colored inks or watercolors um, however a word of caution uh, and that is don't expect to necessarily get it right straight away so you always see the sort of finished products uh, in these sorts of videos after somebody's practice what you don't see is perhaps the work that went into it beforehand so i would like to just show you um, 
first attempts. So at first I thought actually I don't even need to look at a leaf. I know what a leaf looks like and they're pretty poor starts although I am starting to think about how I might use the ink but far too heavy handed and so on. The second one's maybe just a little bit of improvement but still um, struggling. I finally really started to get somewhere when I decided I really needed to look again at leaves and get the shape a little bit more clear and the colours and eventually that led to this piece of work and I would encourage you to think about um, exploring and doing experiments not expecting to be perfect straight away so for example this person doing experiments trying to draw a flower um, this example is upside down um, doing experiments trying out different ways to create the look of butterfly wings um, more successful less successful um, this trying out experiments for doing uh, dandelion heads, different brush strokes, different colour combinations uh, and that was the um, the final result. So it was worth the what was actually several hours of experimentation to come up with a really nice final result. So as I said there will be a slideshow in a few minutes um, showing examples of what uh, other people have done and the next session we'll be looking at combining watercolours with other media like pens, um, coloured pencils, pastels and so on. I hope you enjoy uh, this session and get some good results and if you do do Facebook consider joining our Artful Facebook page and posting your achievements on it. Bye bye for now.